Portland stress, fool. I felt like this was a laid back city, but some of you guys look stressed right now. It's fucking ball. Sometimes that's how fast I move, all right? And I'm telling you, you can laugh, you can smile, you can glare, you can leave early and be like, that was boring. Same way you leave every party, like, that was boring. Bitch, maybe it's you at a certain point, okay? Maybe stop going out in public, you don't know how to behave. You can laugh, you can smile, you can glare, I don't care. I'm going to do me, and I'm going to go real fast for the next 45 minutes. I'm going to go fucking hard, and you can laugh, smile, glare, leave. I do not give a shit, because I'm telling you right now, the cold hard truth is, I already have your money. No refunds, bitch. I'm taking this shit to the bank. First thing I'm buying are these motherfuckers some hair transplants. I'm gonna change your lives. Maybe it's because I cuss. A lot of people don't think that I cuss when they come to my show because you saw me in America's Got Talent. That's a fan, yeah, but it's a family friendly show and they don't let you cuss on that show. But then I lost. Maybe if I won, my life would be different, but I lost to an Asian magician. You say fuck to him, okay? He made everything disappear. Cards, markers, my dreams, he took it all. He's not performing in a weird treehouse community right now. I am. I thought he was amazing until I realized how easy it is to trick a dude with Tourette's syndrome. It's hella easy to fool me, okay? He did that shit on purpose, too. He'd wait for me to twitch and be like, where'd the marker go? Actually. That's what's crazy about that show, man. It's been on for 15 years. 15 seasons. People don't really understand how the shit works. I'm explaining it to you real fast. It's been on for 15 years. Comedians like myself have only made top four a couple times. Because we're the only performers out of singers and jugglers and all the other shit. They have to write our own material. And then sometimes the producers show you can't say that material. So we got to do new material. They took away my words. They censored me. This is my talent. Me, microphone, words, swag. If you take away... Take away my shit, take away all the contestant shit, make it a fair playing field, okay? Take away the magician's cards, now he's just a dude that does this. There was an acrobatic couple with a husband hung from a ceiling, spun his wife around, take away his wife, now that's just a motherfucker on a ceiling. I'm not voting for that shit, I'm calling the cops. It took away a lot of my jokes, most of them you'll hear tonight. One in particular I really want to do, they said I couldn't do it because the one word in the joke, they said it was too offensive for America because they think people are more sensitive than I do. Joke is, I'm the one in my family who has Tourette's. Five sisters, one brother, people come up to me all the time, say I have seven kids, how are you the only one who has it? I don't know, but I have a theory. We were born in a very particular order. It's my oldest sister, two years later my next sister. Two years later, my brother. Two years later, my sister. Five years later, me. Two years later, my sister. Two years later, my sister. Bitch, you left me in the balls too long. I overcooked. And then I told the producer, I want to do that joke on the next episode. He said, you can't. I said, why? He said, you can't say the word balls on TV. I said, but that's what they are. me a sheet of 50 words I can say instead of balls, and one of those words was sweetbreads. That's fucking disgusting, okay? I'm not calling my dad's balls sweetbreads. Ruined a delicious treat for America and my family. I feel like I'm performing for two different crowds right now. This Def Jam, this church. You guys need to pick it up. Said no. Oh, you guys got. I knew you had it. I already 
knew you had it. I already knew you had it. You know why I know? Because I was standing over there for a whole show, and then I saw each one of you go boop, 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 and then you went boop, 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 and then you did that, and then my Twitch went, oh, fuck, no, 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 no. That's how it is, you know? It's like, wait, that's how Tourette's works. It's like a fucking dog when his ears go up and he hears some shit. That's what it was. I fucking felt your Twitch, and I was like, no, 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 no. No, yo, I appreciate y'all for coming out. I really do. That's very exciting. I've been getting a lot of people with Tourette's that come to my shows now, which is, yeah, it's beautiful and inspiring, but it's also chaotic. I need you three to leave, please. <laughs> You're in the perfect spot. Please escort them out if you go. <laughs> yeah, yo, this is how Tourette's works. If you don't know, I'm educating real fast, all right? If you have it like we got it, and you have the twitch or the verbal, both your shit starts to act up more if you make eye contact with somebody because you guys think you got Like the fucking four of us are going to break dance fight before the night's over. This is how comedy shows work. You're doing a pretty good job so far. I do a joke, then you guys go, ha, 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 and then you shut the fuck up, and I do the next joke. It doesn't work if I'm in the middle of a joke and some of the back got verbal Tourette's like, Hoo! That's why we don't let pigeons in the goddamn comedy club, okay? It's distracting. I was on stage last week for the most people with verbal Tourette's I've ever had in a show. Six. That doesn't seem like a lot, but we didn't know we were there until we all found out together. I was in the middle of a joke, all of a sudden somebody here said, chur, 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 chur. Somebody here heard of that and said, ba, 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 ba. Somebody here was like, na, 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 na. I was on stage like, ba, 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 ba. Chur, 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 ba, 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 na, 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 ba, ba, ba. I was like, yo, I'm performing the goddamn Rainforest Cafe. Oh, I heard a clap. Look what happens when you put your Bibles down. You can really enjoy it. stupid, it's all jokes, if you don't get that, get the fuck out, ride your bike home, I hope you get hit by a bus. I hope the snow hits you in your fucking face. It's all silly, it is all stupid, okay? I, I make fun of everything, I make fun of people all the time, right? I, I meet a lot of people every single night, I meet hundreds of people every single night, a lot of good people, and then like way more shitty people. And don't look around, there's over 200, some of you, not great. For instance, I said, does anybody have Tourette's? And someone said, no, for everybody. <laughs> Probably not a great person. I make fun of everybody. I mean, a lot of people, my least favorite type of people, homophobic. I never understand the mentality of not liking somebody who's not like you. That's insecurities and fear to me. Most homophobic person I've met in my life, my Uber driver. Sometimes when I travel, like right now, I'm gone for months at a time. So I take my wife's luggage because she got bigger luggage. But my wife's luggage is pink. But I don't care because I'm not 12. Also, I'm colorblind. I thought it was gray. She tricked me. I'm very disabled. <laughs> in the back, I hop in the back, first thing out of his mouth was, wall man, pink luggage, huh? I said, yeah, pink luggage. He said, wow, you must not be a man. I was like, nah, I'm a man. Which is not a convincing way to say it. You don't want to pop your wrist like that. I put my heel up, I was like, yes, I, I booped his nose. I said, boo, boo, boo. Now we're both men. You can always tell the homophobic people in the crowd, because anytime I do anything flamboyant, y'all take a sip of your beer. It's a tell. It is. You're like, oh shit, you doing gay shit? Suppress it. <laughs> Which is so weird to take a thing shaped like a dick and put it in your face. <laughs> to hide how you really feel. <laughs> Church, pray. Pray for your treehouse community. Look, I'm very thankful. I don't go out. I'm also impressed that you left your homes in general. I don't leave my house unless I'm doing comedy. I don't like to go out. I, especially if I live in Portland, I'll never leave my fucking house, okay? I've been here for two days. It's been 5,000 different climates outside, all right? It doesn't know what it wants to be. You don't live in a real place. It's fucking Jumanji out there, all right? You live in Disney Plus. It's a fantasy land. It's not real. I've seen rain before. I like it. Hey, you pretty. Now your guys' rain hits me in the side of the face. There's no cloud over here. Just uppercuts my face. This is the only place in the country I can walk with an umbrella like this. And I lied earlier. I've been in Portland once. This is my first time performing in Portland. I've been in Portland before. It was over the summer. Your summers are disgusting. They're sticky. This should not be a climate, okay? It's uncomfortable. I was here in the summer. I was here in July. And it's moist. 
that shouldn't be a thing. Everywhere, I'm in a different city every three days, okay? And everywhere else in this country has a breeze during the summer. You know what a breeze is? I'll explain it to you. It's when you walk outside and you're like, oh shit, did somebody turn a fan on? That feels so nice. Not Portland, just feels like a dude going oh, on the back of my neck. Oh, goddamn day. favorite shit to do. Do not invite me to the house. Somebody up there every show always invites back to home. It's usually doing the front row with like a tight ass shirt. Do not invite me to the house. <laughs> Don't let me shirt either. It's the tightest one I've seen, okay? It looked like you robbed the building there before you got here, right? <laughs> My least favorite shit is when I come to your home, you give me a drink, and I guarantee some of you do this where you slide a coaster under my drink. It's passive aggressive and it's rude. Stop doing that shit, okay? Cause you act like you care about what I'm saying. Meanwhile, you're worried about a little water ring on your table. If you're concerned with a water ring on your table, house better be impeccably clean. I don't want you to be sliding a coaster in my drink and in my peripheral, I see a box of cat shit that's been there since June. <laughs> Fix your life. Also, if you have a cat, let it go. It doesn't want to be there anymore. It doesn't. Some of you look at me right now like, mine does. No, it doesn't. Now, now, open the door and see if that motherfucker stays. Too long. What are you staring at? A better life, probably. I'm a dog person. I think most people are. I think most people are. You know why? You know why? It gets a cheer every time I say that. Every single time. You know why? It's because most people like affection. They don't like a little serial killer running around the fucking house, looking out the window, waiting for his next kill. Kill shelter too, that's how you're supposed to do it. I walked in, lady said, we're gonna kill these dogs next week. I was like, that's aggressive, I'll take one. <laughs> and as I was leaving, I turned around and I said, why would you kill these dogs? She said, we got new ones coming the next week. We don't have room for them. I said, you a monster. She said, well, I said, you a fucking monster. <laughs> if you kill an animal because you don't have room for the animal, you're a monster, okay? My parents raised seven kids in a four bedroom house. They didn't kill us, they just do hot pockets and us told to shut the fuck up. There are better ways. You should feel brave, man. You should. You should feel brave for being outside. It's scary to go outside these days. It's terrifying. I'm on stage. I should be most scared. Some of y'all still look nervous. <laughs> Mostly the bald white dudes. <laughs> you look scared. It's scary to go outside, man. There's shootings in this country almost every single day. Almost every day. Fucking three happened last week. Almost every day. Everybody's got the solution to how we're supposed to stop shootings. This is mine. I think the only way we stop them is we got to stop selling guns. Woo! <laughs> to white dudes. <laughs> You're still on board. <laughs> to white dudes with fucked up haircuts. <laughs> and if you're not laughing, you're that dude. <laughs> if you're not laughing, you haven't seen the news recently, because when the shooting happens, they take a picture of a guy, and his hair is always crazy, okay? A haircut will drive you insane. That's some personal shit you better get right. When I was 10 years old, my mom took me to Supercuts. They gave me a bowl cut. I almost killed everybody. <laughs> The other solution is we cover quiet people. So if you've been laughing tonight, you have to die. I'm sorry. Quiet people are suspicious. Say some shit so I know how you feel about life. Who do they interview when a shooting happens? Shoot his neighbor. What does the neighbor always say? He was quiet, low enough, kept to himself. What do they never say? Oh, we just love beer pong pitches and basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that joke was too real for some of you. Mostly the white guys. Everybody else laughs. The white guys are like, I'm gonna shoot him. I don't give a shit. I'm the hardest motherfucker in here to shoot. You can try. Twitch, hit that. I don't care. Hit this. This doesn't even exist. I've not seen a car since I've been here. Hit this motherfucker. I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'll fight tonight. Most of you are high, anyways. I beat the shit out of stone. You can tell who's high because they laughed during the setups. Everybody else waits to the punchline, the high people are like this the whole show. <laughs> I hit the shit out of you, dog. I'll fight tonight. I'm 31 years old, never been in a fight in my life, which means I'm ready. <laughs> I've been waiting for this thing. Young dude, I'll fight a young dude on it. Because here's the problem, right? Every time I do that joke, there's no exception. I can see you just like you can see me. I feel like the audience sometimes, even in the back, you feel like I can't see you. Dog, I see you. <laughs> Dude, this is not a big room. It looks like a little cute ass DMV. I can see everybody, okay? You guys are all waiting in line to get your bikes fixed. I can see everybody. And here's the problem. I'm telling you right now, every time I
I do that gun joke, there's no exception. There's always a few white dudes in the crowd glaring at me as if to tell me with your eyes. I don't really like that joke very much. And I'm gonna tell you with my mouth, I just don't give a fuck. I fight a young dude, anybody in their early 20s? I'd be scared too. I saw some of you walk in, you look 13. I will fight you tonight, okay? But I get it, you don't wanna fight me, because if you lose to me tonight, you, it's embarrassing, dog. I don't even, I'm fucking dressed like a goddamn flag football referee. It's embarrassing. <laughs> older dude, I never fight. I don't fight older guys. How old are you, sir? 44. 44? Yeah, I'm not gonna fight you. Well, Jesus Christ, 44? <laughs> you are not aging well. <laughs> Numbers, but 75, right? You would say 75. <laughs> Holy shit. 44, dog, that's funny. You're only 13 years older than me. Is this my future? <laughs> Yo, if any white dude's got a gun, shoot me now. I'm a twitch here, just fucking shoot this way. Shoot this way. <laughs> twitch into the bullet. I would never fight you though, I don't even like your confidence. You said 44, but in your head, I can see your eyes, you were like, fuck off. I'm not gonna fight you, dog, I won't. You got too much, you gotta do this is the thing. Anybody else, if I challenge anybody else in this room, they fucking puff their chest, they stand up, you haven't moved since I challenged you, okay? You're sitting there with your hands in your pocket, legs open, you wait for me to come to you, so you can do some shit you learned in the war. I'm not fighting you. If we got a fight, he would do some shit I don't even know exists if you learned before I was born. Like, he'd wait for me to get real fucking close and just kiss my neck and my leg will break. Drag me home to meet his cats. I can't wait to become 44. Old person, then that's my goddamn dream. He has nothing to lose. He has nothing to lose. If you old, oh my God, you live in the dream. You have nothing to lose. What the fuck happens if he fights me tonight? He kills me. What happens? He does life. What is life? Church, pray for him. Use your prayer for good. You know what I hate the most, man? I don't like toxic masculinity. That's what I see when I go fucking say the gun joke and when I get on stage. I've been doing this shit for over 10 years. And every time I get on stage, from my experience, usually females are smiling. They're very excited to see you. Dudes are right here. Even you, you haven't smiled once till I just pointed at you. How weird that you just glaring the whole time like a challenge, like make me laugh, motherfucker. You pay, bitch, just laugh. You're laughing like, like you just sit there and you fucking, the way you laugh is as if you, you smile like real fast, as if you have shit to do after this. And I'm telling you right now, I've been outside, you don't. Parking closed four hours ago, so just get it gone. It is though, it's this tough guy shit where you like, this motherfucking little cutie won't make me laugh. And you puff your chest. <laughs> I wish some of you could stand where I'm standing. You see so many. <laughs> That's what I hear, by the way. I know you think puffing your chest makes you look tough. All I hear in my head when I see you guys do it is, oh, oh I'm gonna get you. Shit. I'm getting intimidated by anything. I'm not scared of anything. I really don't give a fuck, okay? I will fight tonight. I will. I really don't care. Talk to masculinity. I can't handle that shit. If you identify as a male, to me, you're a male. I don't care what you wear, how you act, how you talk. If you identify as one, you won. It's that simple. I'm wearing my wife's blouse right now. You think I give a fuck? I was in Alabama last week. I said that on stage, and there was a dude in the way back of the comedy club wearing all camouflage. She stood up real fast. She was like, nah, man, that's gay. Real men wear camouflage. I was like, no, they don't. Fucking idiots wear camouflage. Unless you're in the woods, you look like a dumbass. Why the fuck is there a tree floating around the back of the comedy club right now? You look stupid. And also, technically, we're all wearing camouflage. It just depends on where you are. Like, bitch, try to find me in the ancient end. I dare you. Shirt on a hanger. I'm tired of being told I can't wear a romper either. I rock the shit out of a romper. A lot of guys are like, rompers are gay. No, they're not. I'm a heterosexual man. I'm married to a beautiful woman. We fuck all the time. Does she have to help me take my romper off? Yeah, they're very confusing. Copy 
get an article club here. <laughs> we got a lot of couples at my shows. You two married? Yeah, how'd you propose to us? <laughs> on, a, on a mountain overlooking Vancouver, and then you, you paused and said Canada. <laughs> I know where, yeah, I know where Vancouver is. Oh, is there Vancouver, Washington? Oh shit, I only knew about Canada, so. You did a mountain? That's smart. On top of a mountain is fucking genius, because if she says no, you just put it. <laughs> I guess nobody's getting married! I'll see you in Portland, bitch! <laughs> that was a bike, it was a bike. I don't know if they had those before the war or not, but I'm That's cute, that's smart. You two married? Yeah. How'd you propose? Uh, I was uh, getting promoted while I was in the reserves, so... You get promoted while in the reserves? Yes. And then... No. I feel like you answered something I did not ask. <laughs> how'd you propose? I was in the military. No, 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 but how'd you, like, give her a ring? I've been shot at many times. No, 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 but how'd you, like, profess your love to her? I was in Vancouver. Which one? Yes, bitch. <laughs> yeah, what's your answer? How'd he do it? It was, it was a promotion ceremony for the military, yes. Oh, it was at a ceremony for the promotion. Oh, okay, you left out some details. <laughs> I thought you were just saying some random shit. I was like, you go sit with the Tourette's group. <laughs> How'd you propose? I love the Olive Garden. No, you're not hearing me. I'm amplified. <laughs> That's cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for the service. <laughs> that sounded like I didn't care, but I do. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks for giving your all for this country. I appreciate that. Uh, hey. No, you got it. Yeah. and then I was doing the motions and then I saw everybody drag him on. Take a sip, dog. Look who you're next to. Take a sip. Yeah, you look thirsty. Take a sip. I'll do this. Just finish it. Just finish it. It's a new Twitch. It just fucking finished. <laughs> Terence is crazy. You two married? Yeah. Yeah, how'd you do it? Uh, Portland City Grill. Portland City Grill? Oh, okay. Uh, which, which Portland? <laughs> Geography jokes, fuck you guys. Uh, Portland City Grill? Yeah! <laughs> A guy I haven't heard from the entire show? Yeah! It's my favorite fucking grill! Who knows if you're in a relationship, man? They're tough. Relationships are difficult. I've been in one for a long ass time, 14 years, high school sweethearts, and it's tough. Relationship? No, you don't need to clap. She's not here. She don't need it. Uh, I left her in Vancouver, guess. Yo, it's tough, man. It's really tough. Relationships, especially high school relationships, they're rare for a reason, right? Because you don't know who you are at 17, let alone another person. You gotta figure out each other's likes, dislikes, turn ons, turn off. After a few years, you become a new person. You gotta rediscover each other. Hope you still like them, motherfucker. It's very tough. My wife used to love my tattoos, fashion, working out. All this shit used to turn her on. None of this shit works anymore. But the other day, I made the bed, and we fucked. She said, oh shit, you tucked the sheets? I was like, you got that right, I tucked those sheets. I'm about to take you to the Portland Grill, bitch. <laughs> Fuck yeah! I hope everybody fucks tonight. Think about me. Not in a weird, not in like a sexual way, but like just me in a bubble going like, yes. You're doing a great job. Even church, do it in your weird fucking... Just, whatever you guys, you're polite. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I can't. <laughs> you guys are laughing, I just 
just out 35 Bibles. Stand up! You guys have been phenomenal, man. This has been so much fun. Look, if you enjoyed the show, bless your heart. That's what comedy's all about. It's about coming into a room and laughing about shit you're not supposed to laugh about, okay? That's the beauty of it, all right? I'll repeat it one more time for the motherfuckers who didn't hear what I just said. It's about laughing about shit you are not supposed to laugh about. That's the beauty. You didn't like the cussing, swearing, anything me and my friends said offended you in any type of way. I'm gonna sincerely say from bottom of my heart, go sit in a pothole and think about your life. <laughs> we do not care, okay? We don't give a fuck. We got your mom. We do this next thing. We're gonna do this shit for the rest of our lives. Your negative opinions mean absolutely nothing to us. Write your little Yelp reviews, your Facebook posts. Nobody reads that bullshit but you. I promise you, okay? I don't. I don't. I get emails every fucking day, all right? Every. I got one two days ago. A lady emailed me. She said, Sam, we were so offended by your show. We left after two minutes. Two minutes of you being on stage because your cussing and swearing ruined our entire evening. And I wrote it back, bitch, you really fucked up because I get real good around three minutes. <laughs> it's insane to me that you think that's how it works. It doesn't work like that. The reality of the situation is I know how they came in, they were ready for the show, and they got excited. Then I was on stage, I said the word fuck was, was a trigger word for her, which is insane to me because the word fuck and cussing means absolutely nothing, okay? It's feeling like everything else. It's like and and the and fuck. It's the same shit, okay? That's also why they won't let me be a kindergarten teacher. And the uh, fuck. This is. It means nothing. And she was in the back, and she heard the word fuck. She didn't even hear the funny jokes I was saying. She was so upset by one word that means absolutely nothing. She turned to her husband and said, Stephen, we need to leave right now. And then Stephen in his head went, God damn it, bitch, I paid for these tickets. But they left because he's a good husband. He drove home. She was in the passenger seat, arms crossed, thinking about who the entire way home. A thousand percent, yes sir. Hundred percent. She was arms crossed like, ooh, when I get home, I'ma email that motherfucker. She can say motherfucker. She was like really wagging, whatever bullshit word she is. And she got home. She sent an email. She thought it was gonna change my life. Okay, I never changed for anybody. I've been the same dude since day one. Especially email from a motherfucker. I don't know. You're out of your mind if you think that's how life works. This is the reality of the situation. All right. What really happens is me and my three friends are gonna fucking me and my two friends are gonna run around. There's not three. I'm the third. Fuck you, come party. We'll see you at the Portland Grill, baby. I don't know why I did this, that was aggressive, I apologize. I don't even do this right, I fucking, it wasn't even aggressive. If this was a gun, it wouldn't even, the way I fuck, it was like, This is what really goes down, all right? What happens is, after the show tonight, we got one more show, okay? And I'm gonna do that show, and then my two friends, we're gonna run around Portland, we're gonna run around the city, and we're gonna get real fucked up, all right? And then we're gonna end up a couple minutes away in our hotel, probably gonna end up in bed again, we're gonna smoke some weed, we're gonna pass that shit around, I'm gonna pull out a Kit Kat bar, we're gonna share that, there's four pieces, three of us, I'm gonna get two, because I bought the shit. And then I'm gonna pull out my phone, and we're gonna laugh at your bullshit emails, all right? Right, because I found out a year ago, almost a week after AGT ended for me, how sensitive people in this country were about language real fast. I made a post on my social media, on my Instagram, that I thought was silly, and I lost 10,000 followers in 10 minutes because of one post. That's crazy. It's insane. It's crazy that people tapped out that fast because of one word, right? It's really ridiculous. Everything I do in my life, whether it's stage, TV, social media, I don't see my family often, I don't see everybody, because I'm, I'm over here. I'm trying to bring joy to people's lives. And also, if you don't like something that you see on social media, yo, bitch, it's free. Scroll. <laughs> Okay, I was walking into a Subway sandwich shop. I know, offensive. <laughs> and on the sign it said, come on in for the hot soup. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought that shit was hilarious. <laughs> so I took a picture, I posted my Instagram, and I just wrote, who the fuck goes to Subway for soup? <laughs> It's the same goddamn bucket of soup since they opened that subway, okay? It's never been touched. I like how the young people are laughing and he's like, I love their soup! <laughs> Keeps me warm on a winter's eve. <laughs> That's all I said and I immediately got thousands of messages like, you can't say goddamn, you can't use the Lord's name in vain, you're going to hell. For real? 
You think that's how life works? You think I've been a good person my entire life? I try to do everything the right way my entire life, and one day I'm going to get to heaven? And God's going to be there with a tool like this. He'd be like, oh, you were a good person. Inspired a lot of people. Gave charity. You made it your life mission to make people laugh every single night of your life. But you also said my name in vain. Goodbye, motherfucker. He's going to pull that I'm going to fall through a cloud into a bucket of hot chicken noodle soap. Church is like, that's exactly how it works. Praise God. what I think. I think it's less about cussing and swearing. I think it's more about people that have seen a person with a disability be this confident before and that shit scares and intimidates people. And it does. It's true. When you see me up here on stage, a lot of people bring such insecurities because if a lot of people have what I have my entire life, they fucking crumble, okay? That's why I'm beginning the show. I say, who here has Tourette's? Only a couple people out of over 200 say, yeah, it's because most people with disabilities, that's why I commend you guys for coming out and having a good time live your lives. Most people with disabilities don't even like leaving their homes and I know this because they message me every week telling me so. And I tell them the same thing I'm about to tell you, because I totally relate to that. I hate going out too, because if I fucking have Twitch in public, some shit like that, so what's your, why do you do fucking, why do you do that? Why do you fucking, okay, now I know why people own guns, so. <laughs> I wish you were behind me and you just popped out and fucking blew on it. He chugged his beard. It's crazy. Most people with disabilities, they don't like leaving their house. And I get it, and I relate to it, and I tell them the same thing I'm about to tell you. If you leave with one thing from this show, leave with this. Never let anybody dictate how you live your life. I'm living proof, all right? A year before my audition for America's Got Talent, I told my manager I want to go on this show. I can do something real special on this show. She said, no, you can't. You'll never make it on that show because your tattoos, cussing, your edgy comedy, people will never accept you for who you are. I dropped her that day. A year later, I auditioned by myself and I made it to the final four. And it's because, you know why it is, right? It's because the people closest, I know a lot of you can relate to this, almost everybody can, because the people closest to you want to tell you how you're supposed to live your lives, right? Friends, family, co workers, people at church, they want to tell you what you're supposed to wear, how you're supposed to act, what you're supposed to say. All that is bullshit, life short, do what the fuck you want to do. I wasn't happy and successful until it was exactly who I was supposed to be on this planet. I'm telling you right now, for the rest of my life, if you try to put me in a box, bitch, I'm going to twitch out of that motherfucker every time. <laughs> The best, the best thing that I got from America's Got Talent was I got thousands of really beautiful messages from parents who have children with disabilities that now know they can achieve great things because they've seen somebody do that shit. The best message I got, the best one I got, mom says, Sam, my 10 year old son has Tourette's. He goes to school every day and every single day he gets picked on. These kids surround him, they push him, they hit him. They say, you have Tourette's, you are never gonna be shit. And he comes home every single day defeated till he saw your episode and changed his life. We went to school the next day, and the kids surround him, they pushed him, they hit him, they say, you have Tourette's, you are never gonna be shit. And for the first time in his life, he turned around, swung back, hit a dude in the face, and said, I don't have Tourette's, I got swag, bitch! Yeah.